Hi everyone, I'm Martin and welcome to another edition of Astronomy for Beginners and today we're going to give you an introduction on how to observe the sun safely using a telescope. Also it's going to cover a little bit on uh, imaging as well so I'll give you the, so you can get some great images of the sun itself. Now the sun is a very bright um, star and it's so bright that uh, even if you really just look at it, it will blind you. Now the reason why I'm saying this is to cover when you're observing the sun it is extremely dangerous to look at the sun even just looking with your normal eyes or even more so with a telescope. Because it magnifies the light and collects a lot of the light, it also collects most of the harmful rays from the sun. And that those rays will burn the retina of your eyes. So when you're observing the sun, take very special precautions. The reason why I say that is losing your eyesight, you'll lose your eyesight instantly, without a doubt, as soon as you look through the eyepiece. So Top tip, number one tip is when you're doing any form of solo observing, top tip, I would recommend you get a, a solar filter. Now, there are all the me many methods to observe the sun safely, and that is one, uh, one example is you project the sun uh, through the eyepiece at one end and using the cardboard is focus the, the sun's rays that way. However, uh, you may see some of the sunspots and all that, but the main warning, it's not ideal for a telescope of this kind. Now this telescope has got mirrors as well as a lens element and when you're focusing harmful rays directly from the sun to image it on a projector on a piece of card, yes, your eyes will be protected, but then your telescope isn't. And what that does is it will start to burn the, the coatings in the mirrors and you're going to damage your telescope. So if you're doing the cardboard project projection on a telescope, ideally use a telescope of a refractor a lens telescope and then you can safely project it on a piece of card uh, it does work but do not use uh, any other telescope like a Schmidt Cassegrain and Maxus Top Cassegrain or a Newtonian reflector to image a piece of card of the sun directly because you're going to burn the optics without a doubt so refractive telescopes are also the safest ones to do it with. However, as I mentioned before about uh, optics of uh, your telescope, if you've got a different type of telescope and you can't, you want to see it through the eyepiece, uh, then you're going to need to use a solar filter. Now, solar filter is basically a, 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 a protected filter that takes out 99% of the harmful sun's rays and filters only 1% of that light that's safe for the eye to take. And to do I doing that is you're going to invest in one of these. Basically, this is a solar filter. This is done by uh, Orion. This is Orion stock solar filter. You can get these. You can get other brands as well. I've been bored to do a brands and, and series of filters. And then what this does is it fits onto the objective lens. Uh, when you want to first purchase your, um, your solar filter, is get the right size and I mean what I'm trying to say is get the right size filter not only for it to fit but also to fit it properly so it's not hanging loose so that if it does fall off and you're observing the sun you're going to risk damaging your eyes and I mean really bad 
blind your eyes. So you need a, a very safe and secure filter so that it's not loosely in there and it's going to drop off and blind you. And to measure it properly is ideally get a tape measure and measure across like so across the diameter evenly to give you the uh, the measurement you want for the side filter. At the moment I have got around about 14.5 centimeters or 145 millimeters. All right, and this is not the the measurement across the glass. This is the outside measurement of the actual cell itself, the actual lens cell itself. So you're actually measuring this part. Okay. So basically, this part here, here to here, that's what you're measuring. You're measuring across because that will give you the true diameter of that um, telescope. And making sure you've got the correct filter so that it is safe and secure. It's very important. There is many times I've used saw filters before and they were all hanging off loose, which is not ideal at all. And OC safety kit takes priority. And this is the reason why this is very important. You can get filters that will roughly fit it, but ideally get a filter that has nylon or screws so that when you place the filter snugly you basically fit it over like so and then you can tighten up the screws and you can see how rigid that is i'm actually moving the mount and the telescope at the same time but the filter is very safe and secure so it just shows you how how important getting the right size filter Alright, so this is something that you need to look at, is getting the right side of filter. Now, if the filter is slightly under, a lot of good uh, telescope retailers will show you the dimensions in between a certain amount of diameter to this certain amount of diameter. So, even this filter, uh, this will still fit a Maxitop 102, for example, and, okay, it will be loose, but these bolts here will compensate and then tighten it up. Now you can get some just with no push fit, but make sure it is the bang on size. Now I don't really like the push fit, I really like the solar filters with the screws. Because one, once that filter is in place, that's going nowhere. Alright, so any slight puff of wind or something like that, or you nudge the telescope, or someone nudges the telescope and it falls off the filter. Um, but if if it does that and you're looking at the same time, that's when the accident's going to happen. So top tip is get look for a decent glass solar filter with the appropriate bolts and appropriate fitment. Very important. I'm a big believer in safety and safety what counts for. Now there are all other alternatives for the guys who are on the budget and you can get the uh, the bar the solar filters. Now these are basically solar film that's in A4 sheets. You can you can buy them from around about 30 to 40 euros. Uh, but the thing is with all sheet film it's a very thin film, it does the job, uh, but be careful, get the correct one, because one, there are two types, one is for uh, photography and the other is for visual, do not use a photography uh, solar film for if using it while looking at the eyepiece, because there are different types of filtrations. And if you're using a photographic filter, that's going to let in a lot more harmful rays and going to damage your eyes. So get the correct filter for the job. So with the solar film, get the correct one.
get the visual one. If you're going to use it to look it through the eyepiece, get the visual solo film, not the photography film. Again, two of your solar filters, you've got to make one. Um, if you're good with your hands, and you can, you can make a cheap one, and it will do the job and, and do it really well. However, true with solar films is they are fragile, and you need to check before you use that filter. When you're looking at the sun, make sure that you check for damage or piercings or holes in the film, and check that it's not damaged in any other way. Uh, another quick tip is shine a light of that film, a bright light, for fluorescent light preferred, and then shine it across. If light does pierce through, do not like to use that filter whatsoever. Get a new uh, solar film and replace it. Again, with solar films, uh, they are fragile, but they are cheap and they do work if you use them correctly. Glass filters are exactly the same. Again, you check for any physical damage to uh, the glass itself. Check the glass, very important. Okay, make sure you check the glass for any chips or damage or even cracks. And again, any of those signs, do not use that filter whatsoever. All right, do yourself a favour if you if you're going to need if you want to look at the sun and the filter's damaged, buy a new one. For God's sake, do not use a damaged solar filter. I've seen it over and over times again, and I've seen through people using damaged filters, and it's not the way to go about it. Use a fully serviceable filter. And again, when you're using your filter, now the two things with glass filters is when you take them out, the coatings is not here. The coat, this is just a plain glass here. Yeah? The coatings are actually from the other side, from the inside. Now, this is the main reason why this is the most vulnerable side, because that's where the protective coatings are. Now, if there's scratches in there, all right, there might not be any scratches on here, but double check the other side. Uh, because there's coatings here, uh, any scratches or chips, do not use it because you might not see it from this side but you will see it from that side that's another little handy tip to remember if there's any damage or scratches and I mean deep scratches that's going to interfere do not use that filter and that's another point to check out again to increase the life of the filter and prevent it from damaging as soon as you stop using the filter replace it in a suitable container quite snugly tight and fit, all right? To, for this to fit, I have to push these screws in and it'll fit nice and snug, snugly inside here. And then I'll cover it up. And it will protect the filter from damage and all that and, 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 and risk damaging the glass and, and the actual coatings itself. So get some form of container to protect it. Now, there's a lot of uh, these filters that do come with little boxes. Keep the original boxes. By all means, keep the original boxes because that also will protect the filter from damage. So keep the original boxes if possible. But again, something to remember of. Now, we're going to go outside and I'm going to set up the telescope and I'm going to show you a few hints and tips as I'm uh, putting uh, the telescope together and setting it up for observing the sun. Just to make you guys aware, um, when I'm filming this, um, I've got due to a lack of space on my balcony. So if you're a bit concerned why my head is missing, that's the reason why because uh, I couldn't get the right sort of angle. So due to the lack of space and all that, you're going to have to bear with my head being missing on the, on the part of the film. So we're going to go outside now and we're going to show you uh, how we're going to set it up and a few handy hints and tips along the way. So catch me on the
about. Now, the sun is is the nearest star to us, and you can get some great um, detail on the star itself and see the sunspots and some of the surface detail. Now, before I even go through to this video guide, it is crucial that you have to take certain precautions when you're taking images or you're looking at the sun. Now looking at the sun is extremely dangerous and if you're not careful if you're not careful you could lose your eyesight really quickly. So whatever you do with any particular telescope, ensure that you get a um, solar filter for the specific telescope in hand. In order a filter at a reasonable cost. Here's here's one I keep safely in a kit uh, in a, a nice rounded colour. And you can pick these up for around about depending on the size and diameter, you can pick them up around about 60 euros to about 200 euros for a decent solar filter. It basically fastens straight onto the telescope like so and then you can secure it with uh, lock screws, which is a very nice handy feature and seriously recommended that you get a solar filter based on a, on that sort of type. Now because it's a glass filter, this filter is usually quite uh, handy. Um, they last a long time. As long as you keep them protected in the little storage case that I had in there, right, it will protect the glass and from damage and all that. With this filter, it is securely fastened now, ideally, um, believe it or not, it sounds very strange that when you're observing the sun, is do not use any uh, finder scopes or or red dot finders. You do not want to be aiming the telescope to the sun at a particular range because if you look at the sun, even that will damage your eyes. So obviously, remove any finder scopes or red dot finders. Now, at the moment the telescope is not pointing at the sun, but using uh, a 2 inch diagonal and using a top tip, use the lowest powered eyepiece you've got. And I use a good old trusty fit 2mm fossil. You can use bigger eyepieces depending on what you want to use, but I have two inch eyepieces, but I'm just going to use the inch and a quarter. The 32 millimeter for 52, 52 fields of view is ample enough. Basically, you just slot that in like so. What you're trying to do is you're going to try and aim the telescope. Now, you can do several choices. Um, because you don't have a viewfinder or finder scope, um, you do not want to be looking at the sun. So, top tip is either if you look down and look at the shadow, basically you be wanting to move move the telescope using your hand controller or use your manual controls. Have you noticed? I'm still not looking at the sun. So basically what I do is I move the telescope and I move it and what I'm trying to do is look at the shadow on the ground. Okay. Once I look on the shadow on the ground and it's level, I look for the telescope uh, piece like so. However, you notice it it's sort of temperamental. You might not really be getting in the eyepiece, and um, it takes some time to get it centered. Because of the filter is minimised a lot of the light, you cannot see anything until the sun pops out of view. But again, just do not attempt to look at the sun. Um, by all means, another tip: you could just remove the mirror diagonal off, and then. got pure light coming through and then you just keep moving the telescope up and down sometimes if you catch it put hand and cast a shadow here you may be able to find
find it. So again, once you've got the once you've got the telescope in view, right, and hopefully you can do it that way. But however, I find that even more tricky. So what I do is remove the uh, the mirror. The diagonal, put the mirror in the diagonal place. Now, there's a lot of um, solar, there's a lot of uh, solar observing techniques you can do, but this technique works best for me. Although it does cost a bit of money. Now, you can use a straight through finder scope, but the finder scope ends up being straight through and you're basically looking through the sun. Alright, now this, before you start using the fine scope to aim the telescope, you basically slot it in place like so. Then, in here, what I have here is what you can get from telescope service, or you can make your own solar filter. This is a 50mm. Uh, Fiber scope solar filter. Again, this has a bore filter uh, system on there, and what that does is it slots in place, like so. Now the fine scope is now safe to look at the sun. Again, check the damage on the solar filter itself. If there's any chippings or scratchings or deep scratches that expose through, then do not use that filter. This filter, this fire scope can now be safe to be used to point the sun. Now the straight through finder is is great for looking, but you may chance of looking directly with the sun with your other eye. So close one eye and look through it that way, or use a, a sun shield like a cardboard across the bit to cover your face from the sun. There is another way to do it: is get yourself a right angle to find the scope. That will prevent you from looking directly at the sun. And then basically, like before, look through the viewfinder, using the crosshairs, line it up. And then you focus the image. Again, top tip is remember, making sure you ever do point this at the sun, make sure that the finding scope is aligned with the telescope so you can find it. As you know, it's there. I did not look at the sun at all. Okay? Now, I have the sun through the eyepiece, I'm now just looking at, at the sun, I can see a lot of sunspots on there, uh, fantastic really. Um, you can use a bolo lens and you can fit the bolo lens onto there so you can get a more closer up on the sunspots. However, I like the wide field views of the sun, it's really detailed, it's really crisp and you get some amazing results. And Believe it or not, using, you can take great pictures using an iPhone or Samsung, anything, and you can just take the picture, like so, move the camera up, center, center the sun on the eyepiece and then you line it up like so it's a bit tricky at first now if it doesn't go into view the uh, the focus as soon as you go in there And 
and you just take a photo like that. Now you might need to focus it. Sometimes to adjust the camera. However, it doesn't normally work. So they're all alternatives. Now you get images from the sun like that. Um, for that method, but I also find that using this method is the best method, method I think. Put an inch and a quarter of the ducks in there. best method is get yourself a webcam and believe it or not you can get some amazing results for a webcam now unfortunately this is a dedicated Pyfy uh, webcam this is a specialized uh, camera and basically what that does it attaches at the back like so Like so, and the camera is basically now attached. Right, like so. And with that camera, um, you can link it to a computer using the capture software, using either using uh, the uh, SharpCap, for example, or use uh, another program which is I use is uh, Easy Planetary for this particular camera. Or use a capture software and then capture an AVI file of around probably 30 seconds to two minutes if that um, a minute would be fine and then what you do with the AVI files if you refer to my last guide on stacking uh, planetary images it is the same exactly the same process you do for planets simple as that crucial point is that when you change that camera uh, you need, may need to check on the computer and adjust the focus so it matches uh, the focus to the image so you get a nice crisp image of the, of the sun. Very crucial to get the focus right. Um, but again, it's a lot better using a simple webcam than using a, a phone. I'm not disputing that uh, um, the phone is not good enough, it's just that uh, with the phone, the main problem is you can't angle the phone on the eyepiece and you can't get it central enough or you wobble or something like that, it may distort the view of the image. So webcam is the best source. There is another alternative is use uh, DSLR imaging. Fitting a DSLR, the same process. Again, you can now use an inch and a quarter adapter for the camera and get a T-ring to mount it onto the camera and then slot it at the same place. Uh, again you can take pictures like that as well single shots or if your camera does have uh, that uh, a certain video capture program as you know as you can take ABA file frames uh, take a short film and you're laughing and it's exactly the same process you do for web webcamming not all cam DSLR cameras have it but some do some yeah. don't again as you can see this method I use is the best method I think it is for solar uh, solar observing. Using the right angle finder scope combined with a 50mm solar filter. You can make these filters yourself. It does take a bit of time to make one, but it's again it's another cheaper alternative and the main thing is it is safe to use. Providing you check the filters, making sure there's not damage or chip in any other way, then use it while means. I prefer the glass method because the glass uh, method uh, are much more easier to uh, use, a lot more easier to use, and the, uh, they reveal better detail as well. Yeah, I'm just revealing all the, the nice details on the sun. So what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to show you some more techniques you can use. You know, this method I think is the best method of all. Providing you can use, get a little bit straight straight view finder that you might have a chance of risking looking at the sun 
So I use a right angle one. Use the right angle mirror. And that's what I use, personally. And with this system here, I can find the sun very effectively in less than a minute. That's how quick I can get it. It's worth that little bit extra to invest in getting the finer scope with the filter already in place. And you can find it a lot better than trying to use no finer scope and then trying to find the sun using the controls or the, or the, or the controls, the mechanical controls on the telescope mount and then using the shadow and then trying to find it that way. You could spend probably minutes and probably half an hour trying to do, just do that alone. But with this system, this is the best possible system I think, and it makes it a lot easier. Again, have you noticed here, there are two filters. Never use a telescope without a filter. And not other, if you don't use the filter, what it will do is not, it will damage the optics and the coatings on the telescope mirrors and the, the lenses, plus risk losing your eyesight. So whatever you do, always use a solar filter when you're doing this type of work. And ideally, buy your solar filters from a proper dedicated astronomy shop or a telescope specialist shop. Avoid going to going on eBay and things like that, where you can buy them on cheap online. Avoid them at all costs because I guarantee you now. Uh, those particular filters will fail and you will lose your eyesight. So buy the high, buy the good quality solar filters. They're not much. They cost around between £30 right up to about £200 at the most. There are all more expensive solar filters around, but they really reveal uh, much more detail on the suns and you'll be able to see the solar flares and the granular structure on the surface on the sun. However, those filters are known as hydrogen beta filters are very, very expensive. And just for a single 50 millimeter one of this size will cost you in the region of 2,000 pounds. It's not an ideal um, sort of investment to buy a filter of that kind of quality, but you get some amazing uh, images from it. However, if you do go, go serious on solo, uh, observing and imaging then please do get a filter like that because they reveal s s fantastic images however these filters are white light filters and basically they will just show you some uh, visible detail of the sunspots and some of the surface detail however there is an alternative to reveal a little bit more detail is using a filter from Barber and it's called the Solo Continuum Filter, which I'll explain at closer up. Right, something else I want to show you, and this is the the Border Solo Continuum Filter, and this is this filter is used to reduce the atmospheric turbulence, and what it does is it boosts the contrast on the the surface details on the sun. Um, it's a great it's a great way um, to increase detail particularly for achromatic uh, refractors and uh, due to their false color and all that this also helps to reduce that false color as well um, not a very cheap filter I'm afraid cost around about 70 euros for this filter or 80 euros for the filter. works out around about probably 50 or 60 pounds but it's well made uh, I got the inch and a quarter, which is which I think is more than adequate. You know, you only want the inch and a quarter in particular, because what this filter does, it just screws on onto the nose piece of my webcam, and 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 then uh, it's quite simple, and that's all you need really. Uh, but again, it this can be screwed onto any eyepiece, ideally an inch and a quarter eyepieces. Or they do a two-inch variant, so you can cr you can screw the two-inch uh, eyepieces as well. And you can screw it on there, and uh, it will enable you to see a lot more uh, contrasty views of the sun sun surface. However, 
point to note out is do not use this filter without a solar filter. This is not a solar filter to protect your eyes. This is basically an, a filter that enhances the detail. Now ideally this filter, you know, do not use this filter without a solar filter. You need the solar filter fitted on the telescope without a doubt. All right, it's very crucial that you do that. This is not a filter purely just so it's safe to look at the sun. There's no means, by any means, it will help you in that way. But what this filter does, it will announce detail in there. And um, this can be used in conjunction with the eyepiece or a webcam. And it does reveal some of the detail. Now, what this filter does do is it will make it turn into a, a greenish colour. Uh, but that's not to worry. Uh, but what that filter does do is it enhances the detail, so you can see all the grainy structures, and uh, it, and that's what that does. So you have to bear with the with the the false green colour. However, I would seriously recommend that the filter that you you do use is use use this filter on a scope uh, no less than a four inch refractor or a six inch reflector. Uh, the max of 12127 uh, you can just get away with it. But any smaller scope, smaller than a four inch refractor, then it's not even worth bothering uh, getting this type of filter. Because again, like most uh, filters, nebula filters in particular, uh, well, you end up losing a lot of uh, magnitudes and brightness and it's just not worth the investment. So ideally, a four inch refractor upwards is ideal that's when this filter becomes handy to use anything smaller then it's not worth the money but again I thought I'd just highlight uh, what you can get to enhance the views uh, and and also make it possible so you, so you can see further detail especially when you're imaging you want to capture all that magnificent detail in there so we're at the, the other end of the telescope and basically I'm doing the imaging part of it. Basically using the inch and a quarter adapter I've slotted my uh, planetary webcam with its nose piece, an inch and a quarter nose piece and it just basically slots in there and tightens up like so. Basically it's connected via USB connected directly to the computer. Now obviously the, the sun moves quite a bit so I'm going to look through the uh, the finer scope and aim the telescope. Because the mount has a high focal length, ideally uh, you need to focus reduce that telescope just a little bit more so your image scale will be smaller. And to do that is using a 0.5 Antares focal reducer. And what that does is it simply just screws into the webcam like so. Take the webcam out and screw into the fossil reducer. And then replace directly onto the telescope. That will give you now a, a reduced image scale. From the, we're now going to have a look on the computer.
again. Once you start finishing observing or imaging the sun, when you're packing things away, top tip again to prevent eye injury or getting people get burnt by the sun is make sure when you stop using it, move the telescope away from the sun, like so. Get it away from the heat of the sun, like so. Once it's away from the sun, then you can store your uh, filters safely. Now, the reason why I'm saying that, it sounds crazy at first when I say uh, move the telescope away from the sun. Because if you don't, and you take any of those filters off, because this is a, uh, a like a reflecting telescope, you're going to end up burning the optics on that telescope. So always a good good idea to move this, this telescope away from the sun, right? And then you should be safe to remove filters. Now the port guides don't uh, cover that, but believe me, if you don't move the telescope away from the sun, uh, once you take that filter off. You're going to get direct sunlight straight onto the exposed mirror and it's still going to start burning out the optics. It's something to keep a lookout. So, another top tip. Uh, again, like with most filters, um, to protect the coatings, do not damage it. Put it in a nice little storage container, like so. Nice little storage container and put it nice and safely. It gets flush in there, okay, so it doesn't damage the, the coatings on the solar filter and then to also reduce the life of it and making it unsafe. So I put it in a nice tight container so it doesn't get damage the coatings. Again, same for the, uh, the solar filter for the 50mm fine scope, fits in a nice little container like so. And you can use that for for loads of times. Again, cut the caps, and away you go. So that concludes my uh, my guide to solar observing and imaging. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to comment uh, on your views on this uh, particular guide, and. Please keep posting those great images and uh, thanks again, thanks for watching and this guys.